ass. Hi, everybody. Hello, us. Okay, let's break precedent and start on time. Uh, let's see. The usual round of news. Um, the Alex IV, uh, that is 64-bit viewer, is uh, has one, uh, the, the new candidate has one more bug we are hoping to get a fix out for. Um, and... Uh, it's entirely possible that we will even release it today. Um, the texture crash. Um, it is not a texture crash. Um, the, yeah, it will be out in, in RC. Um, maybe today, maybe the beginning of next week. Um, if we can get it out today, we might promote it to the default viewer before the holiday break. But we'll have to see, of course. Um... I believe the text. Yeah, I, I don't. I am not aware of any texture crashes in it that are not driver crashes or something. Um, but uh, we're we're working on it. Um, so this one was a an, the, the latest one was a an updater problem. So we don't like to release updater problems. That those are bad. Um, so uh, we're. We have all hands on deck trying to get that squared away. Uh, other viewers that we've got in progress, the voice viewer, which is what I'm on today, um, is looking pretty solid now. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that we want to release Alex Ivy, we might be tempted to release this one. But in any event, um, it's doing very well, and uh, it's looking really good. We might... Since we're going to have a little time, we might do one more update with a new release from Vivox, um, or we might not. Uh, but it it does seem to be solving uh, the connection problems that uh, people people have. Um, the TPV update issue with the SL updater, um, it is not as easy to modify the new updater as uh, to be third-party viewer compatible as I would like it to be. 
I'll be happy to work through that with people after we've released it. Um, you know that we we can we can refactor the code so that there are fewer places that you have to change, and they're all nice and centralized. Um, so uh, we can we can do that. Um, I'll be happy to take suggestions in that regard. Uh, we have a you know yet another new maintenance viewer that's out. It's relatively new. Don't have a lot of data on it yet. We've got a couple other experimental ones. The Wolfpack viewer is one that's got a whole bunch of extra, um, uh, a whole bunch of extra code for catching obscure kinds of errors, um, and we'll see whether or not that helps. Um, we should have a new 360 snapshot viewer soon, um, and that project will hopefully get merged into. Uh, one of the main viewer development lines and, and become an RC fairly soon. The main thing that's holding that up at this point is, is that we're integrating that with the uh, place pages backend so that you can smoothly and easily upload a 360 image to your, to your place page. Uh, and that work is in progress and should come out sometime after the new year. Um, So uh, let's see. And of course, you know about the Animesh viewer. That's still progressing, um, making good progress. And we have a project viewer out that's got a bunch of rendering changes um, that just, just came out. So we'll see whether those do better or not. Uh, the plan is that when we promote the Alex Ivy viewer, we will move our minimum version up to 5.0.6, which came out last June and is the HTTP um, is the HTTP assets. So um, at that point, it had it it needs to it needs to move forward. Um, so that's that. Uh, Let's see. Uh, I see that someone added notes here about a fire, upcoming Firestorm release. That's good. Uh, although, Scuttlebutt was that it wasn't really going to be the 17th. Is that still true? Do you guys know? Okay. Um, well, whenever it is, uh, we would appreciate it if it wasn't during the holidays. But um, our our no change window is, I think, let me it look ends at on that Tuesday, January second. Yeah. Tuesday, January 2nd is when we are allowed to start making changes again. And I think it begins as usual. It would be, it would be on Thursday this week, uh, Thursday of next week. Right. The 21st. So the 21st, I think. Yeah. The 21st through the, through the first would be our. Yeah, we don't we don't get overtime. We just get paged. Um, well, okay. thank you. That sounds like a good plan. We like that. That's that's great. Yeah, that's terrific. So um, we're we're hoping to end. 2017 relatively gently here, so we'll see. Uh, so I guess the floor is open for whatever people want to talk about.
I, I didn't make it to the snowball fight. I had another meeting before this one. The EAP update. Um, the, the EAP update is continuing. Butter is here. We're, we're getting... Ryder's been on a power trip ever he's, since he started working on this project. <laughs> Moving, well, you know, yeah. the celestial Contro bodies. <laughs> Controlling the where the sun and the moon ride the sky is, you know, has that effect on a person. Yeah. So, but... Uh, but we're... we're he, he's making progress, and... Um, Sometime after the new year, uh, probably not soon after the new year, but uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll put up uh, some regions on DD that use the new that you use the new system and put out a project viewer that people can see. So uh, you'll be able to start experimenting with it probably before all of the new environment settings exist, but that support the new structure for settings as assets. It'll, it'll be the, yeah, it'll be the new uh, settings as assets. Uh, some of the stuff you won't be able to change, uh, uh, won't be able to change and those will come in, come in afterwards. Right. Uh, Yes, Naran, uh, I have been I have been um, completely swamped with 2018 planning, um, and uh, we've been we've been challenged to come up with great new things for next year, and we are doing that. But um, but it has meant that some of the other things I might have otherwise done have, have kind of fallen by the wayside. So I. I have not forgotten about that because I do think it's a very cool thing and we want to do it. Yeah. Awfully quiet here today, guys. Run away! <laughs> really? Uh, the region access list. Where, where did that end up, Grumpity? I lost track of that. Making the it's stalled. Um, yeah, not region estate. You mean right? Yeah. The bugging Alexa about it is a good idea, although she might not like me saying that. But I'll follow up on it again. It's. Why was teleport home removed from the UI? It's not. What? You push on the home, the little home button next to the URL bar. It's there. Okay, on voice. Uh, in viewer one or two, you used to be able to teleport other agents home from the user interface oh. if you had that permission. Now, at some oh. point, it was removed from the viewer, and the only way to teleport other people home now is through LL Teleport Agent Home. Um, I ask this because ejecting people sometimes isn't very efficient, and right. unless you've got a script to teleport anybody home, 
you can't do it. You right. can estate manager, but if you're not an estate manager, you can't do it through the UI. Right. Okay. That's uh, oh. So it's not teleport yourself home. It's teleport other other people. Um, yeah. Uh, that's there. There are various improvements to, to, to that sort of land experience management. I, I shouldn't use the term experience because that's overloaded. But the, but you know. Better privileges for estate managers and landowners that we do have in mind to 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 do. Uh, whether that specific way of going about it is uh, so. For example, ejecting somebody doesn't necessarily make them go very far, um, and we're going to the plan is to change that. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make it dump them somewhere further away and make it harder for them to come back. That kind of thing. Um, so uh, that, those are on the roadmap, um, but uh, yeah, it, I, we won't put back the ability to for just anybody to randomly teleport other people home because you shouldn't be able to teleport other people anywhere. Oh yeah, I'm fully aware of that. It's just that if you've got the, and I'm sure you know this, if you've got the freeze and eject residents in in a group you can teleport them home but for people that not are not estate managers you can't do it through the ui and it seemed ah. to be strange that why it was removed at some point right right uh and the other yeah so is, it should be possible from your own land to do it with the viewer um well at least not necessarily teleport them home but teleport them out of your land um, and to somewhere that's not adjacent to your land um, is certainly something that uh, I we'd be fully supportive of, of putting it in. Uh, and you were talking about improvements. Does that include uh, a ban log of some uh, description? Because the issue it with... does. Oh, cool. Because the issue yeah, yeah. with uh, estate management is that if I was a malicious estate manager, I could get an estate management rights on somebody sim and add 50 people to the ban list and leave and nobody would know who did it it's uh, on yeah. that feature request right yeah or, or we, on that feature description one of the one of the things we wanted so we want to um if someone is is banned it will record who did the ban and when it happened um and that will be visible in the new ui somehow i i i, I wouldn't venture to describe what that UI will look like at this point, but um, which should make group land management easier and more effective. It'll be visible to the people, to anyone who has the ability to manipulate the list and only to them. Yeah, that's the, that's the idea. All the list will have the same and a, just generally a better UI for them. I mean, we realize that the little teeny tiny windows that we've got now are not really uh, effective. I myself am really looking forward to those improvements uh, because, like I mentioned before, ejecting somebody still allows them to res objects on the land if they can see the land. Uh, and that's an issue because there's some exploits that you can use or well not a grief is used to crash sims and if they're still able to raise an object even if they've been ejected and parcel but they can still raise the objects right well obviously we're also doing our best to hunt down all of the things where raising an object is capable of doing anything bad to the there a exploit with pathfinding, uh, which someone showed me. It's just a couple of prims and a couple of scripts with a timer that sets. Um, well, don't so describe it in too much detail here oh, because yeah, this is going to be a video. So, um, it sets, but it sets file the, an SEC bug report against it, and we will follow up on it. If you can okay. describe what it is, and especially if you can tell us somewhere that it's actually happened in the very recent past. Uh, then we can go get the log, but it did. Um, 
Charis so, has a copy of the script, and she can transfer it to somebody if you want. That would be awesome. Uh, or just give us the UUID of the of the of the script. We can we know how to get things out of the assets. Please, please, yeah, put that in an SEC Jira. And an SEC Jira. That's right. Uh, and there's a there's a bounty on bugs we didn't know about. Um, if we're able to track them down and fix them, and we are, you know, very interested in doing that. Um, we may have a uh, an unconscionably high crash rate on the viewer, um, but we really work hard on keeping it as low as possible on the simulator, and it's way better than the viewers. Way better. So it's actually low enough that I'm not embarrassed about it. Anything going on with the Linux build? Not really. Um, the plan with the Linux build is what it has always been, which is after and only after we re promote the Alex IV viewer to the default, we will put up uh, a repository. In fact, the repository already exists. It's just that I'm not doing anything with it. Um, that has um, has the Linux build in it as a Debian package. And instead of building all 50-something libraries that go into the viewer, we will just require that the ones that can be gotten from Debian will be the Debian versions. And we'll ask for and hopefully receive contributions from Linux users who figured out that which version of which library is needed and what code changes are needed to make it work. And as long as those changes don't break the Windows and Mac viewers, we will integrate them. And if, in the end, we end up with a Debian package that works, then we will ship it. And if we don't, we won't. There will be a repository. We will have a build attempting to build that repository. If it doesn't work, we will not fix it other than by integrating fixes somebody else does. Uh, well, um, I, I, I am aware that there are a thousand flavors of Linux. That's one of the reasons it's basically impossible for us to support. So we've picked one that seems reasonably portable, and that's the one we will build a framework around. If somebody wants to give me uh, an RPM build for it, I will offer the same deal as I'm offering for Debian builds. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even, yeah. Uh, I have not been doing enough with Linux um, on the desktop for long enough now that I have lost track of the, the variants. Um, so, um, that's the strategy, that's the plan, is essentially moving to an active community-supported model that is supported by an active community. Um, and if the active community doesn't materialize, and it has not yet, then there won't be a Linux viewer. That's the unfortunate uh, reality. I just don't have... The, uh, the wherewithal to, to keep doing it the way we used to be doing it. Um, so that will be, you know, I'll, I'll do a blog post or something about that, um, or, and certainly an open source dev post about it sometime after, soon after we get the Alex IV viewer out. And uh, we have the the JIRA open project, open development, and that will be the place to put patches. And of course, you'll have to have a contribution agreement because we live in a world with legal people in it. So that's the plan. 
And I really hope somebody, I, I hope we do get it working because that would be better. What's going on with Mac? Nothing special is going on with Mac. That is, I'm running on a Mac. It works. The 64-bit viewer is way better on a Mac. Although I'm not on it at the moment. It is. It is very significantly more performant on a Mac. Um, the last web user group that we ran had something like 50 people on the region, and I didn't even turn off avatar rendering or anything. I actually forgot to change my graphics settings altogether and didn't crash. It was just fine. Yeah. Zoomed in on a few people. <laughs> yep, yep. Yes. Yes. I'm running ten thirteen. No problem. Yeah, I I generally do way better than that, but I I uh, I do keep my my graphics defaults at a fairly low level. That is, I a jelly doll. Lots of people. Please don't take it as a challenge, but I uh, haven't jelly dolled anyone here. Um, my MacBook Pro is about two years old, and it's running fine. So it's got to be more than works or doesn't work on my machine. Uh, texture decoding and texture memory limit improvements. We're, so some of that is in the rendering branch. Um, we also have another branch where we've been experimenting with replacing the viewer texture cache with one that's structured very differently. Um, so far, those experiments haven't worked out very well, um, but they've kind of been on hold for a little while. And I haven't gotten back to them. Um, but uh, that's another another thing that that we will be spending some time on. Um, I'm gonna probably uh, try to spend a little bit more time on rendering at the beginning of the year next year. We'll see how that works out. Um, try and work through some of our rendering issues, and of course that will dovetail nicely with some of the new. Wind light settings. So, um, yeah, the, the texture limits um, do have that problem that we can't always anticipate when they're going to cause problems for people. So,
server-side reset skeleton option. I'm not sure that I know what that means. I think I'd I think I'd need to understand what problem you think you're trying to solve. I hesitate to have. I mean, that would cause a, a big storm of messages, and I, I'd I'd like to know what problem it allegedly solves. That's that's the sort of thing that what I would like to see is a is a carefully written up repo of configure an avatar in the following way with the following attachments on the following points do the following things see that the avatar is messed up and that other people can't see it if you fix it like spell it out that even somebody as obtuse as I am can just execute the steps and could see it. Um, That's how Whirly writes all her Jira. Um, when I read when I read bug reports, I read it with trying my very best to sort of purge myself of all preconceptions about what's going on because, frankly, my preconceptions are nearly always wrong, um, and so. The more agonizing detail you can include, the more likely it is that I'll believe I understand what's going on. Um, if you wear a rigged mesh with custom joint positions, then remove that. Uh, OK, well, that sounds. Plausible. Oh, shoot, I forgot to change my browser setting. Interesting, because internally, it's duped against an issue that we consider fixed. Yeah, that was the internal issue is was marked as closed in in the bento release. So Uh, I don't think we considered reset skeleton the solution for the issue. All right. Um,
We'll make a note to follow it up. Yeah. Okay. Any interest in semi-automated tests? Uh, the, we have done tests like you describe in the past, Kitty, and the problem is that we change things so often that um, we the tests basically never pass. Um, so, if you want to, if you have a framework that that somehow dodges that problem. Um, I'd, I'd be delighted to hear about it. Yeah, local local mesh is kind of problematic um, because it means that the Viewer needs to understand more possible file formats than it does. Um, it's something we've kicked around. It's not something we've found a satisfactory solution for. Because unfortunately, what happens is that when you when you upload a mesh, it gets it gets changed into a different format before it's sent back, and the viewer would have to do that transformation. It's it's not non non trivial. It would, it would be, it would be an interesting enhancement for content creators um, in the same way that local textures are, and if we could find a way to make it work uh, reasonably well, um, we might we might be able to do that. Uh, I don't really. Local animations. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I could see, I could see doing that. Any other topics? Uh, before I forget, our next meeting will be in four weeks. 
Um, on, let's see. Yeah, on January the 12th. I do not have an ETA for Animesh. I don't have ETAs for things until they're really close. And even then, I'm usually wrong. Yeah. I think the project is going very well, but uh, it remains to be seen how quickly it will get out the door. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what sliders didn't make it. There were there there was a lot of I remember that there was a lot of activity around experimenting with adding sliders and that uh many of them didn't work. Um and since all of that can be done by uh setting things in a rigged mesh, I think we just decided not to do it. Or at least not to do it then. Yeah, there are a bunch of follow-up features for Animesh that have been noted but left out of the initial release plan so that we can actually get it done. We're, we're trying to avoid feature creep on NMesh. There are obviously a great many features that would be interesting additions. But anything that we could conceivably add later and isn't in what we already plan to do um, and won't, create a backwards compatibility problem we're, we're trying to leave out now. Yeah, really nice to have. Uh, you can bring them up, fellas. I, I might just say I can't say anything about them. I'll ask one voice. Um, sure. For me, I've spoken to Soft about this, and he gave me chimed in about this uh, load balancing. The reason why I bring this up is load balancing what uh, sims, because for example, if somebody wants to use a kind of a broken way to crash a sim, they just overload it, and the sim will then dedicate all of its resources towards, for example, running that script. Now, if the sim load balanced and said, "Well, That's you're using too much script time." I'm going to refuse you. Uh, another example is if there's lots of physical objects in a sim, the sim will then dedicate all its resources towards those physical objects at the detriment to any other features. Now, if the sim denies... Well, that, that's not as true as it used to be uh, in either case. Both physics time and script time have absolute limits. Um, so neither one is allowed to take over... Um, yeah, there's there's... Within a frame, within a simulator frame, there's a certain maximum amount of time that scripts as a whole are allowed to take up, and there's a certain maximum amount of time that physics is allowed to take up. Now, what what does happen is that if something is consuming too much, then 
some of the physics that might otherwise occur doesn't, or some of the script execution that might otherwise occur doesn't. But it's not true that you can write a script, or it's not supposed to be true, that you can write a script that will just keep physics from running because it never gets a chance. Um, if I mean, there, it's entirely possible that there are bugs in, in any of this that somehow cause something to take more time than it's supposed to. We don't. The way it's written right now, it's it's not a it's not an interruptible thing. It's a it's you know periodically we check have we spent too much time have we spent too much time move on to the next thing. Uh, the same thing is true of the interest list. So lots of stuff happens. The simulator decides that many things have happened. Objects move, whatever, and then there's a there's another separate section of events where we inform everybody who is for whom those events are visible. Um, we inform them, right? So we let you know that the doors have opened or that the vehicle has moved another half a meter or um, this avatar has begun playing that animation or the appearance of somebody has changed, all those, all those dynamic things that happen. But again, we only spend so much time sending out those update messages. And if that slice of the time for a frame runs out, some of those updates don't get sent, and presumably they get a chance. Hopefully, they get a chance to get sent in the next frame. But um, so it's it, it, so I'm I, I'm interested in hearing what you've got to say, but I want to correct the premise that it's possible for one thing to just swamp us in. It's, it it under ordinary circumstances it isn't. If if it is possible, that's a bug. Um, and and the and examples of things that can do that are most welcome as bug reports. I do have a uh, an example, and I've shown Chalice this uh, just more recently. In that there was a uh, vehicle that somebody created, which through bad scripting or what I don't know, but whenever somebody was driving this vehicle, it would cut the sim stats in half. Uh, and the sim would lag a lot. Uh, there'd be like 20 FPS sim wide. Um, and that seems to be an issue for me. That And it, it, it's more of a bugbear for me because I happen to be an admin in a popular sandbox. And we kind ah. of have to ignore griefers because if you upset these griefers, they can come back with their friends and crash a sim constantly. And there's people out there that will spend hours in a day crashing a sim because they can yeah i i had a, had a bunch of people that decided that my sim was their favorite victim uh for a while um i i, I totally understand um so again specific detailed bug reports of exactly when an event like what you describe happened not the people coming and crashing the sim although if you can if you can report those, that's fine too. Um, but for example, you know, this specific vehicle crushes sim performance. That's great. Send us a UUID of that specific vehicle. We will we will take one of our QA people and say, here, set up a region, put this on the region, and tell us what's going on. And and we have people who just love doing that kind of thing. Uh, and then, and then there's some hope that we can fix it, whatever it is. Or, or sometimes uh, we have, we have also ended up going back to content creators and saying, the way you're doing this is not optimal. There's a better way that doesn't have bad performance implications. Please change your scripts to do it the other way. And and since it usually makes their their objects behave better, they're often delighted to do that change um, yeah <laughs> yeah we have we have QA people that just love to set up a region and play with things that bust them and then they they add copies of those objects to our internal torture tests Uh, we have we have regions we have regions full of objects that cause problems. <laughs> mm. 
No, we, we, we get sufficient torture externally. I have had a thought about something that reminds me. Um, it's a minor issue uh, because you can only do it if you have the knowledge. You can kind of spoof links with uh, in viewer links. Like uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like you put the you use square brackets and you put the URL and then the text you want of that link, and it's kind of sort of possible to spoof a link. Uh, it's not a common occurrence, obviously, but yeah, it's a concern and, for me. You know, in the modern world, um, people just have to know that clicking on links is something they have to be responsible about. Um, there's, you know, we've, uh, yeah, the, um, Yeah, you, you you can hover and see the real URL. Um. The majority of the time, I've only seen people do it for, a, like, they attach through folders, but if somebody wanted to, they could set up a fake phishing website that copied the Second yep. Life website and steal people's and people lives. And people do it. Um, and you have to be careful about phishing links period, um, inside and outside Second Life. And if you're not, you're not. There, there's, a, there's a really, we've spent some time looking at this very carefully, and there's a, there's a very hard limit on how much, we can, how much we can accomplish to protect people from that. It's just something that ultimately the end user has to be responsible for. Um, it's, that's, that's, a, that's an uncomfortable thing for us to be for to be true, but it is. Um, I don't. I want to be very careful that we that we not make claim anywhere that it's okay to click on links under some particular set of circumstances. Um, it might not be, uh, and I don't want to be in a position of saying, "I assure you," or or even more important, Linden Lab assures you that links under these conditions are always safe. That's not ever going to be true. Um, you know, the, the external browsers do a better job than, than we probably do um, because they have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people working on them. Um, so one of the ways to make clicking on links somewhat safer is probably to configure your browser, your viewer, to use external browser to, result, to open links. That's what I do, um, because they have more up-to-date and more um, comprehensive protections. But that's not a panacea. It's not going to necessarily protect you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to remove the link labeling we have. That's, I think it's pretty good. I, uh, Uh, I, I don't know whether I dare or not, but I wouldn't want to, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's that's exactly it, Beck. Um, Yeah, and unlike Firestorm, Linden Lab has assets, so we have even more reason not to make ourselves vulnerable by making claims we might not be able to back up.
Okay. I think things are degenerating. We got any other topics before I before we wrap up? Thank you for dedicating your time and every Linden towards keeping Second Life alive. It's oh, we... Unique. I, you know what? This is the most fun job I ever had. And uh, and I've had some fun jobs. <laughs> so, um, thank you. Uh, y- you guys make this job. You, and I mean all the Second Life residents, um, make this job vastly more entertaining and interesting and engaging than uh than you, you can possibly imagine uh, it's really uh it's really terrific yeah. yes even naran naran contributes mightily all right uh, so on that note thanks everybody um whatever it is you do uh, to celebrate the turn of the year. Um, I hope it's great for you. And I look forward to seeing you in 2018, which will be Second Life's 15th year. How about that? Pretty great. Uh, 13th or 20th year? Uh, 15th. Oh, 15th. Ah, okay. 15th. Hope you have a happy new year. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye, everybody.